Last time on A Trailer Sailor Adventures, I got rained out. The storm rolled through with about 60-70 mile an hour winds and knocked my fence over. And on top of that, it got everything wet. Alright, so now that the monsoon has blown over, I'm gonna get to sanding. Let's see how it goes. But before I got to sanding, I had to get rid of the rest of the rotten wood in my transom. Uh, but I've got it all cleaned out. I've got a piece of wood. The only thing I have now is there's a little bit of give in here, and I think it's just because that's a thin piece. However, uh, that's going to cause an issue, the same issue that there was before, because every time I put the motor on there, this whole thing is going to bend a little bit. I'm thinking if I just lay fiberglass all the way down, it might be fine as long as I make these edges nice and smooth instead of sharp like they are now. However, I'm not convinced, so I'm going to put a few layers of fiberglass back here to see if I can't strengthen it a little bit, make it a little bit stronger. Um, I also have to fill these holes with the epoxy that I bought, um, which isn't a big deal. And then I need to start layering on this side uh, and this side. So let's do it. Here's where I start removing the old wood from the old fiberglass. And it only took me a few seconds to realize you really need a respirator for this. And here I mix up my first batch of epoxy. Uh, once I get the epoxy out into the sun, it cures really fast. So what I did was pre-stage some pieces of fiberglass. Uh, for the strength, I used woven fiberglass on the back of this, and I realized pretty quickly that you can't use it in areas where it's going to show very well. So with the added strength from the woven fiber, I figured I could beef up the transom a little bit. <laughs> Next I cut a template out using just plain old plywood and I sanded it down on the sides to where I got a perfect fit and from there I cut out yet another piece of a much better plywood that I was planning on sealing up and putting in as a final product. It's much thicker than the old stuff so there will be much less give inside the transom which means it will be less of a chance of it breaking in the future. <laughs> So this is me serving in the United States Army while I was in Korea, and I'm wearing something called Mop Level 4, which is mission-oriented protective posture. Everybody in the Army hates doing this, and uh, hate it just as much as wearing this hazmat suit while sanding. It sucks. Really, really sucked. It was hot. I sweat from everything. Yeah, it was not fun. Now the goal here, just so you're aware, is to strip back all of the paint and all of the gel coat to the fiberglass underneath so that the fiberglass I'm laying will stick. Uh, it's recommended two to three inches so that there's a nice protective layer in between the new stuff and the old stuff. Next, I ground down the pieces that I cut off to get rid of all the extra wood and make for a nice smooth fiberglass surface. I even used a chisel at some points so that I could get rid of that extra wood. It was kind of a pain in the butt. Okay. So as you can see, uh, these are the parts that I cut out off of the boat and what I did is I laid them on a very flat surface and then I taped them together I'm gonna fill all these little areas with the 
Total Boat Polyester Structural Repair Putty. Hopefully it'll be strong enough, uh, plus a few coats of fiberglass sheet over the top to keep everything, uh, I don't know, from breaking. stuff's really cool. All you do is mix it with hardener and then you apply it where you want it and it hardens up pretty quick. Uh, it's structural repair so it bonds unlike surfaces or like surfaces together which is why I decided to use it here so I could get these joints back together and since it's fiberglass on fiberglass I figured it would make it even stronger. The first time I used it here I tried to measure out the hardener uh, in later usages, I just squirted a whole bunch in and went to work. It's essential to have all the required materials on hand before you begin, beer being the most important one. <laughs> Somehow I forgot to film myself putting this big piece of wood in, but all I did was put a whole bunch of that structural repair putty in behind, I put it in there with some clamps, and I let it sit for 24 hours, and man was it hard. That doesn't really sound right, maybe I should cut that part out. So 24 hours later, this is what we have. Um, I'm just going to put a huge amount here of uh, this stuff, and man, that's super hard. Uh, everything's obviously stuck in there like nobody's business. Uh, and then tomorrow I'm going to lay the fiberglass over the sides. So this is going to go like this with a whole bunch of putty. I've got the other piece that goes down yonder. And we're going to get it done! The final part to this was making a clamp that would hold that piece on while it dried. And here I am doing it. Once everything is clamped on, I go ahead and fill up all the gaps with that structural repair putty and let it sit. Alright, well that's all you get for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. This was a giant pain in the neck. I spent probably two hours a day for an entire week getting all this ground out sanded down and then the epoxy the putty everything put back in uh, it was really difficult however I probably saved I don't know at least 10 million dollars uh, doing it myself I mean I think that's how DIY works either way uh, if you like the video like and subscribe or don't uh, tell your friends about it tell your mom at least I mean your mom deserves to know about me uh, you can always send me some money in the form of um, I don't know, overseas, bonds, checks, gold. And uh, if you don't have any of that, I hope you just enjoyed and have a good day. See you guys next time.